The Justice League has been around for decades and has been through so many members, it's basically the sugar babes of comics. With well over 100 heroes having been on the team at one point or another, there are bound to be a few duds, and boy, have there been some duds. Not everyone is going to be as strong as Superman, as smart as Batman, or as everything else as Martian Manhunter, but these guys, well, they're just embarrassing. There are the terrible stereotypes, the useless losers and the annoying sidekicks. All of them are pretty rubbish, and some even intentionally so. So, I'm Ewan from What Culture, and here are the 10 worst ever members of the Justice League. Number 10, Moon Maiden. A problem for most big superhero teams is that some members will simply be abandoned in between stories. However, for Moon Maiden, being forgotten about is all part of her origin story. Laura Klein was introduced in 2000's JLA Giant Size Special number 3, and was retconned as being one of the Justice League's earliest members. Her bonkers origin was that she came from a race of Romans who had somehow figured out how to live on the moon. She had the power to control the moon's gravitational pull, and inflict people with, quote, lunar madness because, well, when all the good powers have already been doled out, you take what you get. Number 9, The Brown Bomber. Now, admittedly, this one is cheating a bit, but the appalling idea that inspired this character deserves mentioning. Brown Bomber is an alternate version of Black Lightning who appeared in Justice League of America Volume 2 number 26 after the evil god Anasi rewrote the history of all members of the team. He was an obese white guy who could transform into a hulking afro-clad black man when he yelled his catchphrase which, I kid you not, was literally Black Power. Now, obviously the character was intended as a joke, but you still might be wondering where the hell such a ridiculous idea came from. Well, he was based on the Black Bomber, the actual original concept for Black Lightning. And it gets worse. Not only was DC's first leading black superhero almost secretly white, that white guy was also a gigantic racist. Thankfully, the editor who allowed this mess left before it was printed, and writer Tony Isabella was able to use his much better character instead. Number 8, Blue Jay. You know a character is destined for failure when he's based on Marvel's resident psychopath and professional wife slapper, Yellow Jacket. Blue Jay comes from Angor, a world protected by copies of the Avengers like Australian god Wangina and the Silver Sorceress. The fact that their world blew up probably gives some indication of their abilities as heroes. After failing to rid Earth of its nuclear weapons, in an attempt to prevent it from going the way of their own home, Blue Jay joined the Justice League and showed the world just how useful a guy who can become really small can be? The answer is not very. Blue Jay was absolutely useless on every mission he went on, either getting captured or staying in the background not doing anything of note. He was briefly the leader of Justice League Europe for a mission which ended in typical Blue Jay style, with hundreds of residents of the fictional country of Bialia killed in an explosion. Number 7, the Justice League of Antarctica. This group of intentionally terrible Justice Leaguers was introduced by Keith Griffin as part of his comedic take on the Justice League, Justice League International. The team of third-rate villains made a disaster, the disaster in this case being his knee-length purple boots, am I right? Big Sir, a man so done his first name is actually Doofus, Clue Master, a bad Riddler, Clock King, who had the amazing power of knowing what time stuff was, Multi-Man, who had the amazing power of running around in bright red pants without being embarrassed, and the mighty Bruce, their IT guy. They started off as the Injustice League, but after failing to accomplish anything even remotely resembling crime, they reformed. Joined by comic relief Green Lantern, Gnort, they became the Justice League of Antarctica. The team was formed by businessman Maxwell Lord to get them out of the way, and the heroic exploits lasted just one issue. Justice League of America Annual Number 4, before their base was destroyed by penguins and they were all fired. Number 6, Maxima. Maxima could almost have been a cool character. As an alien warrior princess who was super strong, super fast, invulnerable, and had all sorts of psychic powers, she was like Superman and Wonder Woman combined, and had the potential to be a key member of the Justice League. Unfortunately, bad writing was her kryptonite. Maxima's personality began and ended with wants to get it on with Superman to the extent that she only joined the Justice League to try and get inside those briefs of steel. 
After getting rejected, she spent the rest of her time flirting with every other man on the team, having flings with both Captain Atom and Amazing Man, who presumably was also an amazing boyfriend. Despite having basically every superpower ever, she would constantly get overpowered and defeated by whatever villain the league was fighting that week usually by forgetting that she had at least eight ways of getting out of whatever situation she was then in. Number five, Miss Tech. The story of Miss Tech is one of those weird examples of just how much the course of a comic can be messed up by behind the scenes problems. What we know about the character can be summed up pretty easily. She was a Korean American woman called Seong, but went by the name Jennifer Barclay. Her family had been involved somehow with a shady government agency. She could fire energy blasts and she wore a sculpted costume that made her look like a man in order to hide her identity. The character was created by Christopher Priest and was introduced in the series The Ray while he was negotiating with DC to have Miss Tech star in her own creator-owned series. In order to generate interest in her, Priest was told to make her a part of his other book, Justice League Task Force, and so she joined the team. However, DC then passed on acquiring the character, so he decided to just kill off Miss Tech instead. And how did Miss Tech die? What happened to Miss Tech is that she got in a cramped spaceship, only to suddenly realize she had claustrophobia and died accidentally blasting herself into the cold icy vacuum of space. Number four, Snapper Car. Lucas Snapper Car, Q funky electric guitar noise, was one of DC's and the comics industries as a whole, horribly misguided attempt at capitalizing on youth culture. He was introduced in the Justice League's first adventure as part of an editorial mandate that the team should have a quote, hip teenage member. Well, because obviously kids don't care about the world's greatest detective, or a man who can run faster than the speed of sound. What they really want to read about is a child with the world's most punchable face, who talks exactly like you would expect from a middle-aged writer who has never spoken to a teen. In his first appearance, DC's Poochie helped the team as one of the few humans not taken over by Starro and was made an honorary member thereafter. Lucas Carr had no special skills apart from a habit of constantly snapping his fingers, and so of course was a valued member of the team for around a decade. He was nearly universally hated by readers though, and so was written out of the series after accidentally betraying the team to the Joker. Number three, Bloodwind. Bloodwind was created in the 90s. That sentence is probably enough to explain every single aspect of his character. What really sells him as a product of the 90s, though, is his overly convoluted introduction. When he first appeared, a big deal was made out of the mystery behind Bloodwind's real identity. And who was he? Well, if you guessed that he was actually Martian Manhunter being mind controlled by a demon inside the magic gem that gave the real Bloodwind, who was also trapped inside the gem, his vaguely defined but totally super edgy cool powers of controlling death energy, then you would be right. The Justice League was eventually able to break Martian Manhunter's mind control and free Bloodwind, or is it Bloodwind maybe? Who then joined the team? He would go on to repay the League who saved his life by constantly refusing to actually help out due to some nonsense about not interfering with the flow of natural events before quitting the game for good. Number two, Vibe. Like Snapper Car before him, Vibe was another awkward attempt at reaching a new demographic, this time catching on the 80s love of Latin America. Unfortunately, comics back then weren't exactly known to be on the pulse of current trends, and so the breakdancing loving Paco Ramon was introduced just as it was going out of style, making him almost instantly uncool. His MC Hammer-esque costume certainly didn't help matters either. The other problem with Vibe was that his backstory read like stereotype bingo. He was a jive-talking Hispanic former gang member who constantly hit on women and talked to white people in an exaggerated Mexican accent. Vibe was part of an attempt to reinvigorate the Justice League with Justice League Detroit, and he perfectly encapsulates what was so wrong with that era. It was a failed attempt to make the League more socially relevant that tried to tackle current issues, which badly missed the mark and filled the team's roster with bad stereotypes. Number one, Triumph. There is nothing, nothing fans hate more than a needless retcon. Marvel knows it, DC knows it, and we all know it. So, when William McIntyre, aka Triumph, was introduced in 1994 as a founding member of the JLA, it was understandable when fans let out a collective bout of frustrated onomatopoeia that would have made Adam West Batman blush. Triumph was introduced to the Justice League and claimed to be a founding member, 
But the reason no one actually remembered he was there was because he got transported to a different dimension, which invoked some time travel bollocks and led to everyone's memories getting conveniently wiped. These sorts of, they were there all along, ooh, stories just never seemed to work, and Triumph was no exception. 